one question i get from a lot of i work with a lot of founders in fact many of them uh, got funded by vc some of them got rejected how do you pitch to a vc in 2025 if you're building an ai startup because this is a day and age where people can build without learning how to code who would you put your money on and you pitch to kozla we know kozla what was your pitch like and today if you were to put your money on what kind of founders would you bet on i think people can be so much more resourceful today than even yep. when we were starting yep it's much easier to put code out it's much easier to launch much easier to go market a product get to a couple million dollars of revenue yep. without even having to use capital and i'm seeing so many companies where it's just two three people yep. where they're getting their first 1 million 2 million dollars of revenue yep i think though in the ai hype cycle when people can make revenue really quickly the faster it can come the faster it can go good times don't last and i'm always someone that would be a little bit more cautious or paranoid about how fast you're growing what is the quality of revenue will those customers stick around a year from now so when i yeah. look at a product when i look at their revenue and look at their metrics i want to look at is this going to be defensible in the long run yeah. or is it like a hype cycle sort of thing so that's something a lot of uh, seed and early stage investors are going to be looking at the other thing is everyone is vying for attention and competing for attention so what makes someone want to use your product over other products and there are hundreds of ai saas tools today there's an overload i myself can't keep up with everything i don't know where the average knowledge worker would be able to so how do you stand out and make your product sticky and not replaceable like is there some unique workflow that only you're able to do that creates great lock in effect yeah uh, so as a founder if you're able to answer these questions you've gotten some revenue and you're profitable my suggestion is don't raise yeah like build an amazing business i have so much respect for bootstrapped founders and i'm all all in for create an incredible business just recently uh someone built a business uh to 2 million in revenue sold it for 80 million fully bootstrap within 6 months wow. and i saw that in on linkedin i think that's a great outcome that person is probably going to have a better return than someone that sells a business for 2 to 3 billion dollars yeah. and who's given up most of their business to venture capital yeah when you're profitable you as the founder you as a team are in control Yeah. And when you are burning money, you have to go out every 6 months, every 12 months and raise capital. Yeah. So determine if you need a lot of capital or not. And when you do raise, maybe realize like what do I need this capital for? How far can I go with it? Yeah. Eventually you need to get to a place where can I be sustainable if I'm never able to raise money again? Yeah. So after our seed round and our series A, that was the first question we had was can we be successful without ever raising money again and still keep growing fast? So why do you think uh, Vinod Khosla invested in you? <laughs> You'll have to ask him. Uh we definitely believed in this bigger vision like a moonshot approach He's at the time. He's a moonshot thinker. He 20, is definitely 2020 2019 and he he was talking about bipedal robots. He's the first person who went out openly and talked. I just got off a podcast with a robotic scientist at Stanford. and he's talking about physical ai he saw it coming so early since 2012 he's been talking Why there was not? no ai note taker in 2019 2020 yep. yep and fireflies i would like to say pioneered that market as a whole and they did take a bet on it he was not worried about the technology not being good because every investor i would talk to is like the transcriptions off here like can you actually scale this can you actually build bots and he never doubted on the technology part uh i think he really believed that young founders will be able to do great work. The other thing is most of the people would be asking how many PhDs do you have in your business? And Vinod's mindset is, "Hey, people that are not even domain experts are going to yeah. be able to solve this. You don't yeah. need to be an expert. Someone from somewhere else is going to come and make a difference." Yeah. And that was something that was very motivating for us. And he's he's had some hot takes in recent times. He says that 80% of all uh work is going to be automated by 2030. Yeah. And then by 2040, most manual labor is going to be done by robots. Yeah, the need to work will go away is what yeah. also he said. Yeah. Will humans need a job or will jobs <laughs> actually require humans? That's yeah. a, that's a question that that he has. But yeah, they, they took a bigger bet on yeah. the technology at the time because yeah. back then it was all about proving the technology. Yeah. And all of this other stuff 
is after the fact, right? Like chat GPT wouldn't be amazing if we didn't have LLMs. Yeah. And so we had to prove out the technology in 2020, 2021, yeah. and we had to move fast. Yeah. So we, I, I know when I look at Fireflies back then, and even if I look at Fireflies now, we made so much progress, but all I will see is, oh, this can be improved, this can be improved. So this is the founder mindset <laughs> is you're always looking to make things better. Yeah. And so whenever I get feedback, I, that, that's like that urge to like fix things all the time. <laughs> Thank you.